All right, before we get into the situation where we're going to consider a lot of molecules all bumping into each other and their atoms rearranging, we need to get a couple of key physics ideas out, um, out into the open. So uh, we're going to watch this uh, demo here, and it's going to be very cool. So start. Here we go. All right. Check out how high these different balls bounce. The basketball, the super bouncy ball, and the golf ball. Now I'm going to try the golf ball on top of the bouncy ball on top of the basketball. And then I'm going to explain how it's related to a supernova. Can you see that? Probably not. So here it is again. The golf ball bounced to 28 feet. We dropped it from about three and a half feet, so it went up 800% of its dropped height. In fact, if you consider that by itself, the golf ball bounces about 70% of its dropped height, it went as high as if it had fallen from 40 feet up. That is awesome. So how can we get the golf ball to bounce up with that much energy? Let's simplify it to these two balls. When you drop them individually, each ball starts out with some potential energy from the height of the drop. As the balls hit the ground, some energy goes into heating up the ground and some goes into heating the ball. Because that energy left the ball system, you can't get back up to the same height. But when you combine them, the tennis ball goes higher than its dropped height. Way higher. Where does it get the extra energy? As the basketball bounces, it compresses, storing elastic potential energy. As it releases, it springboards the tennis ball upward just at the right moment. This is like the double bounce on a trampoline when you jump right before someone else. In the same way, the basketball stores energy in its compression and is able to push the tennis ball. But just like the double bounce preparer, the basketball can't go as high. You can see that here. It bounces even less when three balls are dropped together. Also, during that transfer of energy, some momentum transfers from the basketball to the tennis ball. Okay, so we'll stop there. And a key idea was that uh, last little idea that um, during this particular event here, instead of the basketball bouncing all the way back up, uh, basketball bounces down here and only goes part way up. And so, in other words, the basketball's kind of slowed down. In her language, uh, it's lost momentum. So now we're going to switch over to the FET simulation. We're going to see the same idea right in here. So we've seen this before. We know that if we pull on the red lever, we're going to increase the total amount of energy. Now what I want you to see is there's zero motion energy in these particles right here because they're standing still. And so what we'll do is we'll give this particular object right here, we'll give it maybe, I don't know, this much energy here. So if this is 100 units, then we'll give it maybe 40 units of energy. You'll see this thing go fairly quickly and then after the collision, the um, sum of its energy and probably about 90% or maybe 95% of the motion energy transfers into here and maybe 5% stays here just like when we go back to where is that thing in here so just like these objects still continue to move but some of their energy gets transferred into another object it means that the total energy total energy never changes it's just the energy transfers into different um, containers if you will for lack of a better phrase the container being the particles so let's take a look at that so we'll over on the green bar we'll give it 20 or 30 units of energy yellow ball is going to move very quickly transfer its energy to the um, purple and gray ball notice that the yellow ball still has some energy still has some energy they both still have some energy key point is that the total energy hasn't changed so I, can I hit pause on this yeah I can so you saw that this thing is still moving and this thing is still moving so if we added let's say 30 units of energy if this was 30 units of energy 25 units of energy are in here 5 units of energy are in here we'll hit play And I'm thinking now probably 29 units of energy are in here and only one unit of energy is here because I look how small it's, I can see how small it, or how slow it's moving. And a moment ago we could see that virtually all 30 went into here because this thing was sitting still. Okay, so how does that play out in so far as um, this equilibrium situation is concerned? And the answer is because in equilibrium, in real life situations, we're dealing with many particles. So now what happens is, let's just put in some A's, so we'll go pump in some A's. So notice that they all start out with pretty much the same speed, 
but every once in a while there's going to be some collisions and some particles say look look how slow this thing's moving so a lot of its energy got transferred into something else and now it picked up energy from some other substance or some other particle sorry so a lot less energy than it started out with and now it's got more energy than it had a moment ago and now it's got a lot less the total average energy never changes so let's pretend we were putting in I don't know let's see how many particles there are here one two three four five six so let's say we put in 20 units of energy well that's the total average energy so how much is the total energy 120 units so some of these things could be moving really 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 fast um, and how did they get to move really fast because they bumped into things uh, let's say one of these starts moving really fast this is um, this moves fast because this one got slowed down that goes back to that roller derby phenomenon especially the end of the second video where the girl says it's okay if you slow down when you slingshot or push the other girl in fact it's not only okay it's the laws of physics if you slingshot somebody you have to slow down because you're passing your energy off to the other person who's going faster. You give a push in a roller derby, the pusher is going to slow down um, because you transferred your energy over to him or her. So let's hit play. And again, what we're trying to notice is that the total average energy, now we've got a distribution. Some are moving fast, some are moving slow. Now, the distribution of speeds is not a perfect bell curve, and in fact, the shape of the curve, it's kind of bell curvy, changes with temperature, and that's called a Boltzmann's distribution. So what this is trying to show you is that, let's just pick a uh, roomish temperature at 25 degrees. So we've got something that's kind of bell curvy in here, but what this says here is if the average speed is somewhere around here, it says that a small proportion is going to have incredibly low speed and a low proportion is going to have a very very high speed and a few more are going to be a little bit faster and a few or um, a little bit slower down in here and there's going to be let's say five percent that have this particular speed in here so it's bell curve like distribution but not a perfect uh, bell curve again Boltzmann's distribution describes that so now we'll look at the situation of let's say we're gonna try to make A's bump into BC's and form AB's so let's take uh, some BC's and let's put uh, one BC in there and ask ourselves and ask ourselves will we have enough energy to uh, break apart these things and form the AB combination with the C. And I look at the graph and I say, well, I shouldn't have enough energy, but wait a second, this is average energy. So if there's 20 units of average energy, that means a couple of particles may actually have enough energy to get over this hump. Let's say this hump is at 70 units of energy. So are, is one of these particles ever going to have 70 or more units of energy? And if, if one of these particles ever happens to have 70 units of energy and it happens to bump into this particle and it happens to be oriented, this thing is maybe spun around the other way, if all of those combinations happen at the right time and the right place, then we'll get a chemical reaction, which is to say a rearrangement of the atoms. So we're looking for something really fast to bump into this. And so is there a really fast yellow one? Oh, there's a really fast yellow one, but it's not bumping. Oh boy, if only we could somehow encourage this reaction. Well, wait a second. What if we put in more particles? Let's put in some more BCs. If we put in some more BCs, we're increasing the likelihood of a B of an ABC combination bumping into and I notice that some of these particles are moving a little bit faster. Tell you what, let's increase the temperature. Notice how the average energy, total average energy goes up. So now we've increased the likelihood that one or two of those particles are going to have enough energy. So we'll let this play out. 
because not only is it an energy standpoint, but the right particles with the right energy have to bump into each other, and these things have got to be oriented in just the right position. Okay, so now we're going to pause there, and I'll move on to part three.